let me know if this has ever been you. Coding along in C and something goes wrong in your program. You're not entirely sure what, so you add a bunch of print statements all over the place to figure out what's going wrong, and eventually you can't crack the code. So you throw away your code and start over. Stop doing that. In this video, we're gonna talk about the power of core files and how you can use core files in conjunction with GDB, to figure out exactly what is wrong with your code and level up your debugging process. By using this, you can take on your next big project and not worry about complicated crashes that happen as your code gets big. Let's get into it. So for our example today, I've written here an inventory simulator. The idea is the inventory simulator has a bunch of boxes, right? I can either print a box, I can edit a box, or I can quit the program. And these boxes are described here by the structure where we have an int that says the box is already in use and the stuff that the box contains. And you can stuff up to 64 bytes into a single box. The idea is the program runs in an infinite loop and until you tell it to quit, you can either print or edit a box. You read in the box ID from the user and then go about making that action happen by either printing or editing. So a decent amount of code here, not a huge project obviously, but if, it, you know, if you're not familiar with debugging, Debugging a project of this size could be a little daunting, so we're gonna use a core file to show you how to make this program work correctly if we can crash it using GDB. So let's go ahead and run this program for a little bit and mess around. So we have the program compiled, we'll do GCC tac o inventory inventory.c, and we'll use tac g to get debug flags built into the program. So when we have to eventually debug the core file, we'll have all the information that we wrote in our source code reflected in the binary. So we'll do tac g there. And with that, we can now run our program. So we have our inventory simulator. So if we want to print a box, we type P and we could say box, let's do two. Then we see that box two returns nothing because nothing is in that box. So let's go ahead and edit box two. We'll say we'll edit box number two and what's in the box, we'll put AAA BBB CCC. Cool. And then now if we go and we print box two, now that data is in that box. Well, what if we wanted to edit that box again? We can edit and we'll type box two and it says, nope, sorry, that box is already occupied. We can't edit that box. So pretty easy functionality here, not a whole bunch going on. Well, what happened if we wanted to do edit on box some huge number? See how we got a, we'll do it again real quick. Edit one, two, three, four, two, three. We get this thing called a core dumped. What that actually means is that the computer dumps out what's called a core file. This doesn't always happen by default and I'll show you how to make it happen in, in this case. I have a core file that's dumped here. The core file is an elf that contains the full state of the program when the program crashed. If you don't get a core file when your stuff runs, you have to do a few commands. The first you're gonna run is ulimit tax C for core and then type unlimited. This means that the kernel is allowed to produce an unlimited amount of core files. And then what you have to do is do cat proc sys kernel core pattern. For me, I made mine dot slash core so that the core file gets produced locally to the crashing program. Yours may be something different. So to change it, all you have to do is change to root. So now that you're root and you can do, you know, we'll echo uh, new core and we'll write that pattern to this file here. And then if we cat this, the new core pattern is created. So if we crash our program again, we should get a new core file. So that means that we now have a core dump from the crashed program that represents the program in the state that it was crashed. So now what we need to do is use GDB to figure out what went wrong, take this core dump and then compare it to the elf and figure out what about the execution broke the program. The way we can do this is we do GDB, right? So you have to have GDB installed. The way you install GDB is sudo apt install GDB. I already have it installed, so I won't do that. You'll do GDB, the name of the offending program. So for me, it's inventory. And then also a third argument to GDB is the core dump you want to analyze. So for me, we'll do new core. And what you'll see here is we actually get a pretty robust output of the program in its crashing state. So we say the program terminated with the signal sig seg v or a segmentation fault. It terminated in the edit box function where the variable i was given as a parameter and i was this number at inventory.c line 22. That's extremely verbose. This tells us exactly where in our program, our program crashed. And we can actually take this and go back and look at our source file and figure out what happened. So let's go back and check that out right now. We can go back here and it said line 22. So that means that we're in our edit box function. We have I as a parameter and something about this line is wrong. This is what caused it to crash. 
So now what we can do is we can actually look at the assembly instructions and the register states of the program and figure out what went wrong. So what we can do is we can say examine the instruction at PC and we could say info registers. So what this tells us is that we were doing the instruction, move the value of EAX into this location here. So this is RDX offset by RAX times one. So we'll look at those re registers here and we'll say RAX and then RDX. And this is where we get into an issue. So what's happening here is because our index was so big, if you look at our source code, I only allocated enough memory for a hundred boxes. And I was indexing into this gigantic number. There's actually an integer overflow that happened here, but this gigantic number is what got indexed into in our program. And what we have to do is now to fix this, make it so that the user is not allowed to index above this 100. So we'll go into our program and we'll say, if I is greater than 100, print F, you can't do that, Dave. And it'll return zero. We have to do the same thing for the read int function. Because we don't want to give the same issue. I'm sorry, not read int. We want to do this for the, uh, that was for edit box. We can also do that for print box. Because print box can yield the same issue. So now we can take these fixes that we've made here. We can go through and compile our program with our newly implemented fixes. Dot C, tag G. Got two warnings here. Oh, we don't actually do return zeros and avoid. We'll delete those real quick. Cool, no warnings. Inventory will retest our crashing case and we'll no longer crash the program. By using a core file, you can instantly see the state that the program crashed in and then use that to back reference and find bugs in your code. If you're new to GDB, go watch this video on GDB or watch this video that I think you'll like just as much. Thanks for watching.